just circling above. They all want a piece, but they don't even know. We're here. Nah. Won't get even to swipe for the train. Cloudy, ride to the airport. Get to get right for the train. We are here. Like Wipe your hands in a tissue. Yes, I got no shame. Technical difficulties today. But we're here. But we made it. Got another podcast right after this. Uh huh. That's gonna be. It's gonna be live, baby. It's gonna be live, baby. Got the new HOE merch started up. This is our tester run. I think we're just gonna do a simple, a simple uh, logo over the breast pocket to start. I think this one came out tight. I shot some content um, earlier before this podcast um, to kind of model it. Um, got some. I got a big moon shirt made. I'm gonna shoot some for that. A more active, a more active shoot. The reason we're doing a shoot is because I am doing. I'm the, doing the cover of a local magazine in uh, Coachella Valley, so I'll be featured on uh, next month's edition. Which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, it was on the news last week for the Black San, uh, Black SD Magazine's internship, kind of part of the beta test. Um, wanted to give, you know, get some more input on uh, business structure, business structure. So uh, working on that. What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, love, hate, and fear. So where that comes from. Listen to a podcast with Ron Funches and Joe Rogan last week. Ron Funches is a comedian, very funny, lost more than 100 pounds, very dope. Um, and uh, he's at Joe Rogan asked as he asked as he does often, uh, what is Ron Funches writing process? And Ron Funches says he writes about what he loves writes about what he hates, and writes about his fears, what he's scared of. And that is uh, his creative process. He writes that out and creates comedy from that. So I think I'm going to steal that. That's such a cool, that's a cool dope way to create content, I think, Um, and to create, you know, organize this podcast. Uh, Because people, so many people ask me, how do you, dude, we're going to talk about that. But, um, but people ask me how to start a podcast and to speak into a microphone over 115 episodes is challenging. It's challenging. It's not, it's not very straightforward. Um, it seems like it. Joe Rogan makes it look very easy. People make it look very easy to, to have, to do a podcast, um, you know, good. But Joe Rogan is naturally curious, first of all. He has access to some of the funniest people and, and the most interesting people, from Elon Musk to Rhonda Patrick to Joey Diaz. He has access to some of the funniest people, and he has a guest-based podcast. And then you have people like Theo, who, do, who does a monologue and a guest. He has access to interesting people. And he's a comedian. He's a professional talk speaker, you know. He and he makes he's he's a professional speaker who writes and then makes it look so natural. Everybody thinks they can do stand up because it, they make it look like it's a conversation. But these are organized bits, and this is an organized act that they've worked o- worked on for sometimes sometimes more than a year. Or, well, definitely, most comedians work on an act for three years before you, unless you went and saw them. Um, before you see it on Netflix or on the sh- on television, so they make it look very easy, and everybody thinks they can do it. Everybody thinks like I can be. I'm not the funny one in my f- friend group. I'm funny. I can be funny on stage and talk to people. Even I used to think I can do it when I was a kid. I would be like, I can do that. Which maybe I could have done as a kid if I practiced. Dave Chappelle started as a teenager, um, but everybody thinks they can do a podcast because. You make it look very easy. For me, for me, I'm just thinking. Just thinking out loud. Maybe other people can do that. Maybe other people can. It's fine. But so many people ask me how to do it. So many people ask me how to do all the things that I do. They say, hey, I want to be a coach. Some, someone asked me one time, I want to be an online fitness coach. I was like, do you work? And do, first of all, are you certified in any background of fitness? They're like, no, I just work out. First problem. First problem. Get certified. 
because there's so many coaches who are not, and they just say, I work out, so I'm going to be a coach. That's a shitty way to do it. I think that's a shitty way to do it. And same thing with the guy who asked me how to be a coach last week. He said, he said, I heard you don't have to be certified. I said, so you're going to coach people based off of a lie? You're going to start a coaching program based off of f- fiction, based off of your li- just your life experience? Who the fuck do you think you are? Everybody thinks they're fucking interesting. But I talk on this podcast, I, do, I don't think I'm interesting. I just think I know a little bit about a lot of stuff. And I have my personal experience. So I guess, yeah, you have your personal experience, but to coach people based just solely based off of your insight, that's not fair to people. And to take their money because of that. And I also said to him, do the fucking work. He said, How do you he said, How do you become a coach? I said, so he's like, I've transformed my life. I stopped drinking. I uh, work out now. I live this healthy lifestyle. I work a straight job. I don't work in bars anymore. First of all, I don't think that's that significant. That's that's shitty on my part, but I don't think that's a big deal. I don't think that like there's all these motiva- this manufactured motivation or because she has a fat ass or because you went through a transformative process because of your breakup that you think you can now coach people through that. I think that sucks. I think and I've, I, I get resentful because I think that is shitty. I think that's shitty. I think that's a very shitty way to go about coaching. There's, there's one girl in particular who's now, who talks all this shit. I wish I can speak so definitively about shit that I don't know about, really. I wish I could. You got all this white privilege, all this hot girl privilege. You, have, you, can, you can only do this because you have a boyfriend who's going to pay for you. And yes, there's some coaches who do this. I don't want to be sexist to say that not all women coaches who are hot don't, don't do the work. A lot of them do. Most of them do, I, I probably think. But to be, I know this person, and to be so de- speak so definitive about spiritual growth because of a breakup, it's like, oh, fuck. Bleh, bleh. So people ask me, how do I be a coach? Do the fucking work. Do the work in regards to your studies. Get some sort of, get a certification. Or a no- I, th- I would consider getting a number of certifications so you have a broad background. So take the time to do the work. You don't just get to be, you you know what I mean, a business coach right away. Like I want to be a business coach right out of right out of college. Like you're 25. I, who, you know, only you know what I mean. That's not fair. You could be super smart, but that's not fair. It's not fair to people. But I'm a hate. But this is my industry. This is my industry, and all these coaches, all of it is allowed. So I got to say that all of it is allowed. But me, for me as a coach, it's like do do the work and be qualified. It's be qualified and uh, be earnest and build your business on on authenticity, not manufactured authenticity. Don't post bad. Talk about bad stuff too. On this podcast, I've said, "Hear me, not do good," which is terrible English, but that is a quote specifically. Hear me, not doing well. This is me not at my best. Tell people that part too. Tell people the shitty part. Tell people this. Tell people you went from being from shooting to be on a cover of a magazine and to be on being on the news and to pulling in a six uh, uh, a thousand multiple thousand dollar client to then driving Postmates in the same day. Oh, you you putting the work in? That's a story right there. That's a story you tell your grandkids. Say. I did all this, I was doing all this shit, and then I went and drove Postmates to make sure my family had everything that we needed and I could put some money away. And, and oh, I drove Lyft this weekend and I drove Postmates. Tell people that story. I don't, I don't post that, but I'm saying it right now. Go from being, from doing the work and hustling to my boy, his printing shirts, he's printing shirts, he's making, he's selling masks. My cousin, actually, my cousin-in-law, um, Sit, uh, brother-in-law, brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, he's making masks, he's printing shirts, he printed this shirt, he's creating a, he got, he's buying a screen printer, he's going to start doing merch for all of us, and he's bussing tables, not waiting tables at some baller-ass restaurant, he's bussing fucking tables. That is, th- that is the story of success, so tell that fucking story, tell that story, don't just tell people, 
Don't just tell people the good stuff. Hey, fitness person, tell people how much you look in the mirror and pick yourself apart. Tell people that. And talk about self-love. Yeah, talk about self-love, but talk about how you don't have it. And how do I know? I know you. I know you. And I know people who know you. And I know that world. The gym where I work out is the number one gym for bodybuilders on a professional level in San Diego. And San Diego is a, Southern California is a big bodybuilding. Probably it's the mecca of bodybuilding, Southern California. So talk about that too. Talk about that too. Talk about the sacrifice you make in lifestyle so that you can look like that. Don't sell, don't sell this as if this is easy or that most people can do this. Most people cannot do what you're doing. You're selling this body because you're selling that you can have this ass, but most people cannot. Most people cannot. I'm ranting, but it's like you ask me how to do it. It's the same thing. Same thing. You hear Joe Rogan talk about the same thing with stand up comedy. People ask, how do I be a stand up comedy? You get on fucking stage and you suck at it and you try and you write and you do it all. And then eventually, 10 years later, you are that. For me, I went and I worked in a gym, worked in a gym and had no clients, worked in a gym and sold $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 off of the floor, just walking around talking to people, sold thousands of dollars of training. Personal trained from 5 a.m. until 11, went to school, went to college, and then went back to the gym from 4.30 to 7.30. Did that for for a number of years. Taught shitty classes. I suck at teaching classes. So I went and embarrassed myself and taught classes from 5 a.m. to 6. And then trained personal training clients and worked out for an hour and a half that day. Did that for years. Then get, get all the licensing and certifications that make you knowledgeable in your craft. Then apply your craft. Go on, go on your own, in, independent. Realize how hard it is to market yourself. Struggle, struggle with marketing. Realize, or you could be super successful. Boom, some people hit it and they make it. I'm not hating on them. I never do. I never do. Some people do that. I'm a grinder. Everything in my life is a grind. Sober, sobriety, mental health struggles, business. It's a, it's just keep fucking going, grinding. So I'm not hating on a on a quick quickly successful person. Bang, get that money. If your Instagram's popping and you can monetize it, get that fucking money. That's not my story. But where I come from, I'm I'm kind of old school in the sense that do the fucking work and struggle and suffer. And then when you when you old when you're older and you have children, which I have children, my children watch me grind it out. They watch me do interviews, do interviews, do a podcast, then drive Postmates, put food on the table, on the table. Rick Ross says, I, sh- I shovel shit. I see you so we could bow our head and pray over the goddamn meatloaf. Bars, that's fire. People made fun of him for being a CEO. Uh, a CEO. First of all, I know some goon ass CEOs. I know some CEOs that'll cut your face up for a fact. So COs, COs are the criminals of the of the police force. So you can hate on him being a CO, but this CO is that sell dope. But talk about that shit. Do the work. Grind it out. Then you can say, I have a podcast because I know, I know what suffering is. I know what struggling is. I know what it is. I've learned from I learned professionally and I learned personally. The, the ups and downs of life and of fitness. Me, I'm 280 pounds right now. I was 165 pounds when I started working out. Did a ton of steroids. Got, got abused steroids. Ruined my endocrine system. Was, was healthy and unhealthy at the, at the same time within my fitness life. So when I hear clients say, speaking unhealthy about their bodies, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. When you're losing tons of weight, when you're losing tons of weight, eating a thousand calories, and you're and you feel like I'm getting results, results are results. I'm getting shredded. Okay, when you rebound because you're 100 percent going to rebound, 95 percent of dieters gain their weight back within five years. 
So you're going to rebound. My goal is to teach you to lose weight slow and controlled and to feed you more, feed you more as you go. So when it goes back to eating semi-normal, you rebound less. Dude, go through it. Go through it and be okay going through it. I have some times where I'm like, fuck, this shit ain't working. When you have kids, you're like, fuck. You can't tell him Dave Chappelle makes that joke. He's like, I don't know what we're going to do today, brother, <laughs> to his kids. I don't know what the fuck. Sometimes I tell my girl, like, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. But guess what? I'm going to talk about some of the cool things that are happening in my life. But right now, I'm reaping what I have sown. I have a very dope opportunity to do very dope things. And I have a very dope life. But I suffered and I grinded it out. That is the story of success. Not I get popping on Instagram because I got a fat ass or I got popping on Instagram because I'm shredded and I got a full schedule. That is not the common business story. Tell the common business story. Also, tell your story. That's fine. There's room for all of it. There's room for all of it. This podcast, one listener at a time, one new listener at a time. Our downloads grow and grow and grow, and we chip away, chip away, chip away. And you come do it, you do it like a million motherfuckers are listening. This isn't a good podcast. This is an entertaining podcast. I know it is. I know for a fact it is. I listen to other people's podcasts. Especially in San Diego, I listen to other people's podcasts and I don't say I'm better and be shitty about it because I'm not like that. Everyone who asks me if they should how to start a podcast, I tell them to start it. I never I have never once said don't do that. Never once do it. Why the fuck not? Do whatever your heart desires. Do whatever is gonna make you fucking happy. Whether you suck at it or not. Do things you suck at. Everybody's waiting to do things that they're good at or, you know, stick into things that they're good at. Do things you suck at. Struggle. Suffer. Suffer on purpose. Suffer on purpose. Should that be the name of the podcast? Suffer on fucking purpose. Struggle. Stop trying to skip the struggle because, oh, I, I want to be an influencer. Stop trying to st skip the struggle, dude. Fuck, man. I'm getting frustrated because because people keep asking me how to skip the line. You don't get the you, I will guide you. I will guide you and I will if you want to be mentored, understand that I'm going to put you through the work and tell you, "Okay, go get a okay, if you want to be in fitness, go get a high quality personal training certification." Start there um study for 6 months. Study for 6 months, take the test, do the case study. Okay, you want to do nutrition? Go get a nutrition uh, uh, certification. Go to Precision Nutrition, NASN. Go do some sort of some licensing or some sort of certification to make you proficient in working with nutrition. Do it in the gym. Do it in a gym, even though gyms are closed. Do it in a gym. Learn how to sell at 24-hour fitness or a crunch fitness or a New York sports club. Like Equinox, if you can get up in there, learn how to sell for in, from a sales team. Work the floor of a gym because they're not going to just going to throw re uh, referrals at you. Especially now, they have salespeople at Twenty Four Hours Gym, so the trainer doesn't do the selling. The trainer just does the training. Make ten dollars an hour personal training. Fucking struggle. Fucking struggle on purpose. I sound like such a fucking nagger. Ooh, that's whoa, that sounds bad. Na I'm saying I'm nagging. A, I'm nagging. I am being a nagger. Oh, I'm being a big word. That's that's I'm not being a big word, but that sound that sounds bad. I would never I don't say that word often. Um what else? But I'm reaping what I'm sowing right now. I'm gonna be sober coaching. I'm going to be sober coaching and, uh, you know, I, I regard myself as an advocate for people who struggle with mental health and people who struggle with addiction. I come in here and I bear my entire recovery and addiction uh, and recovery and addiction to recovery and mental health struggles. I bear it here to make it normal. Benny said, Eric, watch in five years, you will be doing things in the mental health community that haven't been done before. 
especially for black men, to have a mental health, essentially a mental health podcast where I'm not just talking about my anxiety, I'm experiencing, I had, I did a podcast where I had an anxiety attack on the podcast and went through the podcast. It was one of the most well-received podcasts we've done, by the way. People were like, thank you, boom, boom. So I'm advocating for people with mental health. I'm doing this work. I'm sharing my experience. I'm setting up, you know, to do some hosp- speaking in hospitals, which I haven't been doing a lot of service in 12-step. So I'm going to be speaking in a lot of hospitals in the next couple of months. I want to, I love doing it. That's my one of my favorite things to do. But I want to advocate for people like me because there's people like me walking down Imperial, talking to themselves, spray shinning. But that's what I would be doing. If it wasn't for sobriety and recovery, I'd be spray shinning, fucking jerking off, talking to myself down the street. I owe every every bit of my life to my recovery. Every bit of it. There's motherfuckers who know me and know how bad I was. I owe every bit of it to recovery. And I say that shit all the time in, in meetings. I say that shit all the time. And people, people are so probably annoyed. They're like, this motherfucker's faking it. No, bro, I owe everything, my children, this podcast, everything in my life to getting sober because I could not function at all. And now to be coaching people through their sobriety and be a companion, smacking dope out of people's hands. Sha, 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 sha. Get your life together. Even though that I don't think that, you know, I don't know if that's, the most effective way to get sober, but there's no monopoly on getting sober and recovery. There's no monopoly. I'm, you know, there's smart recovery. I've worked in treatment before. I've worked in recovery before. There's no monopoly on getting sober. 12-step was the last thing that I wanted to do. It was my last option. When I went to rehab, it was, it was like, what do you want me to do? What's the most, what is the... What do the most desperate people do? They go to 12-step. I was like, that's where I'll be all day, every day. That's where I'll be all day, every day. And I owe every bit of my life to that. You know, I was talking about it yesterday. I have no secrets right now. There's no secrets in my life. If I don't say it on this podcast, I tell another man or another woman. I have no secrets. You know, um, none. There's somebody, there's somebody, multiple people in this world who know everything about me. Everything. All of the ups and downs. I have no secrets. And I get to teach these things to my children. My children get to see a generally sober house. My girl's been drinking a little bit. She's normal. She's normal. She doesn't, she's not an alcoholic. She has no addictive nature, uh, tendencies. Fucking weird. Hey, you're too normal. What's your weird stuff? But I realize what her weird stuff is. But I'm reaping what I'm sowing, what I've sown. Finally. Thank God. And I'm humble about it because I struggled. Be be humble and struggle. That's the pod. Should that be the name of the podcast? Struggle on purpose? Suffer on purpose. Let's write that down. Don't just do what you're good at, man. Don't try to skip the line. Don't try to just be an influencer. Don't try to just get... Oh, I heard you can make money on TikTok. Let me pop off on TikTok. Because TikTok has in part of their algorithm that their fir- your first video, they make it go. They make you get a lot of likes on your first video so you can get that dopamine hit and keep coming back. Ooh, they're smart. Let me get popping on TikTok. Let me get popping on Instagram. Let me show my butt. Every, not every girl, but there are so millions of girls on Instagram who have a fat ass who show their big old fat ass for the likes. Yeah, that's all they're doing it for. They're not saying, they're not saying anything profound. They're not providing any substance into the world. None. They're just providing their butt and say, here, you can, if you go to my OnlyFans, you can see my whole asshole. Bless those women, though. You need hoes. You need hoes in the world. You are part of this ecosystem. Loose, not hoes, loose women, but liberated women. Be sexually free. We need you. And whole culture, whole culture is popping. What's one of the pop, most popular songs right now? What? What ass pussy? It's one of the most popular songs right now. 
normalize sexual liberation for women. I believe men can be hypersexual. Actually, men should probably be less sexual. Porn perpetuates rape culture. Fact. Face fucking. Most girls, most girls don't want their face fucked. I'm sorry, guys. Most girls don't want that. Most girls don't want to be fucking fingered and like their guts blown out. A lot of girls don't. Not most girls. I hate to grossly generalize because motherfuckers do that shit all the time. Ugh, let me throw that away. Rewind that shit. That is not what I'm saying. But a lot of people, the idea that there's kids who are 15, 13, 14, 15, 16, maybe younger, watching porn thinking that is what sex is like. It's normalizing, it's normalizing a, a, a toxic way of viewing, of viewing people and women and male-female and, male, interaction. And that's a fact. That's not my opinion. That is not my opinion. That is not my opinion. But I don't want to yuck your yum. I want sexual liberation for people. I want people to be sexually free. But let's understand that a lot of sexual behavior is maladaptive behavior. Sexual trauma leads to some of these sexual acts and lack of attention that people are getting. You know? So, like, uh, I, got, I started my OnlyFans so, so people, I can make some money. I hypersexualize myself. And we talked about that last week. A girl is sexualized for the first time. Who knows how young? We're seeing this child trafficking. They they found a they rescued a girl as young as two years old who was sexual sexually abused by more than twenty men in one day. So two year old little girl and boy are sexualized that young. So you spend your whole life being being pr uh, preyed upon by men and women. Men personally, men most often, I would say generalization, but being being sexualized and preyed upon, sometimes in a good, sometimes not preyed upon, sometimes pursued in a very healthy manner. Sometimes there's healthy dicks too, karate chopping dicks away. Ha, 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 ha. Some bad dick, some good dick. Sometimes I've been the bad dick. Sometimes I've been the toxic man pursuing. So this is not coming from a place of me not being toxic as fuck. I'm toxic as fuck. Let me just say that. Boom, let's say that. Everybody on my social media knows I have been toxic as fuck. So I'm not coming from that perspective. I'm coming from someone in it. I've been in it. I've been the dude. I don't know. I don't know how men sleep at night knowing that they were like, that we were like that. That shit fucking eats me up. That shit really bothers me because I've been thinking on a larger level, on an introspective, existential level, what women have been experiencing what some of the women I've interacted have experienced when it just comes to me and I know I'm not the only one. You know what I mean? Talking about that, thinking about that when we think what we do to women. So sexualized as, 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 as even as young as babies with the, who knows, who knows thinking about that? Who knows who's thinking about that? So sexualized as babies and then spend their whole life karate chopping dicks away only to become 19 and to show their ass on Instagram because for likes. And then they say, you know what? For money, I can spread my cheeks or I can twerk or I can show my pussy and my titties and my vagina and my breasts. I can show them and I can make money now. So not only do people like it, people will pay me and I can build a source of income. I want women to be sexually liberated. I want everybody to be sexually liberated. Be free. Be free. You don't want to yuck people's yum. You want to. You don't want to shame people because when you shame things, when you shame things, that that becomes destructive. When you live in shame, shame is not always bad. That's a whole other podcast. But when you shame things and create a cycle of shame, that creates more maladaptive behaviors, hyper, more hypersexuality, where you put yourself in risky situations. This isn't my opinion. This is all available to look up. All available. But then. So this person who's been sexualized their entire life now finds validation and then monetary success and gain for the, for being sexualized. And this is promoted. This is promoted. And men like me have used have have played within this system and participated within this system. It doesn't for me, my conscious, it doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. It's so it I've woken up so many times in the middle of the night like, oh my God, I was such a piece of shit. Fuck, man. I have a little sister. 
I have a little sister now thinking of my partner, thinking what, what she experienced. It's heavy. And I don't even think there's some pe- women you would tell this to and they couldn't even perceive what you're saying. Because it's not about, I just said, don't shame it. Don't shame it. Don't shame it. But be free sexually. But let's acknowledge what we're doing here. Let's acknowledge what we're doing here. For me as a coach, it doesn't even make sense to to uh, compare myself to female coaches because they're doing they're playing a whole different game. They're playing a whole different game. They're using, they're saying, "I am a pretty girl who has had a transformative experience, and I've transformed myself. So I want to help other people transform themselves." How many how many female fitness coaches do you know who are busted? Not that many. I don't know any. Not I don't know any. Not one. And even if they're fit, you pff, come on, yo. We're we're talking about something today. We're talking about something. So this is gonna make sense for somebody. So suffer on purpose, Matt. Can we tell you how we do it on time? S- suffer on purpose. Um, don't understand what we're doing to women. Understand what I've done to women. Let me not cop out. And I'm not blaming other men. This is me. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about this is I talked about business as usual. This is what we we're doing. It's the game we're playing. And then if you're one, if you're a good guy, then you're a bitch. Like the way that I speak about emotions and things like this, I'm looked at as a bitch. I'm looked at as a beta male, even though people don't know that I'll smack you in the face for for your roxies. People don't know that. They don't know that side of me. It took a lot of violence to get to get to this bitch ass beta male space. How are we doing on time? Huh? How are we doing on time? 33 minutes. Um, suffer on purpose. Suffer on purpose. Stop trying to skip that shit. And you're going to lose. Sometimes you're going to lose. So not everybody. Some people are going to win all the time. But, you know, they're going to lose somewhere. They may get divorced. They may have their child be addicted to drugs. They, they're going to suffer. You don't get to skip suffering. Everybody suffers. Everybody suffers. But I'm saying suffer on purpose. Struggle before you before you try to reap benefits that you don't deserve. That you don't deserve. Even college students. Oh, let's talk about this. Let's finish with this. Kamala Harris is Joe Biden's VP. Okay. Did they choose Kamala Harris because of her race and her gender? Let's say maybe. Let's say probably. Let's say that's exactly the virtue, this the signaling vir- of virtue that they're doing. Let's say that. Let's say that. So, um, are they are they signaling virtue? Yes. But what people are doing, what people are going to do to Kamala Harris? Whether she is black or Indian, she's a woman of color. So stop trying to, this is what we all do. We all, we all, black people and white people negate, negate black men and women's racial status. You're not, you're not black enough. You're the good kind of black. You're using your black... Stop doing that. And if you play that, if you play that, you are fucking racist. That is racist. We're not, we're going to call it out. And guess what? The right, the right Donald Trump supporters are going to play every bit of that. They're going to legit, they're going to ask her to legitimize her ethnicity. Why should she question her existence? You fuck. I don't necessarily agree with this pick, by the way. This is not who I would have picked. This is not who I would have picked. But you're but you're gonna abuse this woman and take and and strip and and a uh, uh, question her racial identity. Why should she have to question her racial identity? You fuck. And you so the right is gonna use 
that, which is in essence racist. So why do we say you're all racist? Because you use racist shit. You do racist ass shit. And and then you pass it for for everybody else not allowing thinking that's cool as PC culture. When they're when conservatives are against PC culture, they're like, why can't I be racist and sexist out loud? Why can't I say racist and sexist shit? Why can't I call people names out loud? Donald and that's what Donald part of what Donald Trump does is he allows that because he does that. Because he does that. And people like him because he says, he says what is on his mind. At least he's honest. Do I want everybody to be honest with everything, every dirty thing that they think? No. If I did that working at Apple, if I said the things that Donald Trump said, any workplace, HR would say, I'm sorry, you got to go. Okay, so that's point number one and number two. I don't know how many points were there. That's point number one and number two. Being the district attorney, this for black people and white people. Being the district attorney, do you know what this? I have a district, I have an ADA in my family. I'm not going to say who, but I have people, black black men, black man, in my family who is an ADA. Does he have to prosecute other black people? Yes. Is the criminalization is the criminalization and the and the criminality in the black and brown community, is it a piece of systemic racism? Yes. Being put in poverty and being perpetuating poverty your entire life will perpetuate crime. Redlining and keeping people in ghettos their entire life will perpetuate crime and poverty. Let's not pretend how we got here. We got here through racism. There's a clear linear path. You educate yourself. That's not my job to educate you. But did, so Kamala Harris was a district attorney. First of all, you make it the district attorney of, of one of the largest bureaucracies within California. You you do it. Go ahead. I'll wait. So people say, people say, uh, people say like, she did this, she did that. Okay, you work, you work in HR at Home Depot. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, dude. You you are qualified. You're the pundit who's qualified to criticize this person's or their politicize uh criticize their uh 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 work experience just because you have an opinion and that's what people is Dunning Kruger. Let's look it up. Dunning Kruger. <laughs> Dunning-Kruger, in the field of psychology, the Dunning-Kruger effect is cognitive bias in which people with low ability at a task overestimate their ability. You are a dumb fuck. You're a dumb fuck. You're a per- and there's one person I'm thinking in particular. You're a personal trainer. You're good at getting people fit. You have no qualifications to question this woman's law degree. First of all, you... You couldn't do it if you wanted to. You couldn't do it if you wanted to. But even if you could do it, you would have to make difficult decisions that you can't even perceive you need to make in order to have, in order to keep your community safe, perceivably safe, in order to keep your constituents happy. Because law law and order is part of this political structure, Democrat and conservative, left and right. Safe neighborhoods? I know I have two children. I want a safe neighborhood. If that means prosecuting people who are pro- people who are more into criminal, not into, but people who are in, within criminality, I want you to be harsh. Not harsh. I don't want you to over prosecute, but I want you to prosecute them justly. I want them in jail. I don't want them walking the streets, risking my home and my safety. Period. I don't. I don't. I support cops generally. I want the police. I don't want to defund the police or abolish the police. I, I, well, if when when we say defund, what I want is reappropriate funds from the police, demilitarize the police. The police don't need tons of AR-15s, trucks, and fucking all that. 
They don't need that. I don't want my police to have that. So, so when I say I'm, I'm, I'm not for defund the police. I'm from, I'm for reappropriation of funds. But when it comes to, do you think you have the qual, the qualifications to question her legitimacy as a district attorney? No, you don't. You dumb fuck. Take it easy, Dunning Kruger. You think you have the, and that's because social media. And I do it too. But the difference between what I do and what other people do is I share my personal experience and I come from a place of humility. I come from a place of not knowing what the fuck I'm talking about. And I say that often. I say that often. And as Americans, we have the right to criticize criticize our elective officials. So that's part of what America is. And I think we have an obligation to question our, our uh, government. But don't question someone, someone's existence and their identity and their and their education because you disagree with them politically. The way we're talking about each other politically is so fucked. I call it disgusting. It's disgusting. And I and I comment, I comment on conservatives. And when I comment, I don't comment and disagree because there's no argument. There's no arguing on those platforms. If you want to argue, come on the podcast. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a battle of ideas. I'm having a battle of ideas right now. Let's have let's have a battle of ideas. Let's talk about policy. Let's talk about what you think is positive policy. Don't just say, the, look at the economy. Okay, break it down to me. You can't. You can't break it down to me. Neither can I. You can't break it down. So, so oh, the economy is good. You don't, how did the economy get good? get good? Was it Obama entirely? Or is it, is it your opinion that Donald Trump did it? Do you know for a fact that he did that? You don't know. You're not, you don't know. You're a personal trainer. You don't fucking know what you're talking about. So, and then they say the Dems, that someone said, give the Dems the vaccination since they're all for it. So we could test it on them. That's your neighbor, you fuck. He lives next to you. His kid goes to school and studies next to your kid. He might be the police officer who protects your home later in life. He might be the doctor who saves your life. You're so gross. It's gross. It is gross. It's, and these are the ramifications. This is a Donald Trump presidency. It's made people disgusting. That's why I want him gone. Not because of his policy. Not because of his policy. It's because the language he's used and the piss poor leadership. When there is op- when there is a- adversity, I want a leader who's going to bring us together. I don't want a leader who's going to separate us into factions. That's what he's done. For- and that's when pe- it's fascism. That's when people say it's fascism. It ri- it borders it borders on fascism. And people and people say Democrats are communists because you want to have free health care. That's not communism. You s- stupid fuck. That's helping, that's helping somebody else. I don't believe in communism. I believe in helping other people. If I, if I can pay more in taxes, my whole family has done this in New York State. All my, I've done this and I, my people do this in California. I'm willing to pay more in taxes so the people in my community are, are protected and safe. People who look like me are having funds. The problem I have is that bureaucracy squanders funds. There needs to be, a more, there needs to be more accountability in California and New York on where our taxes go. I don't give a fuck what people say. Stop giving the police more and more money. Give the teachers union more and more money. There's more investment in, the, in criminalizing people than there is in educating people. That is a fucking problem. The reappropriate funds. Yo, I'm dropping fucking knowledge on these motherfuckers right now. I'm dropping knowledge. Yeah, I came in hot today. I came in hot today. We're going to wrap it up, though. Suffer on purpose. That's the name of this podcast. Stop trying to skip it. Stop trying to skip it. This Dunning-Kruger, you think, you think you're more qualified than you are. You think you're more qualified than you are. You, th- you really do. And there's people who I'm speaking to directly. But of course, take risks. Go follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. Whether you want to skip the line or not, follow your dreams. Everybody be free. Start a podcast. I encourage everyone who's ever asked me to to start a podcast, I tell everyone to do it. I never say don't do it. But I know how, this, I know how hard this is. 
I know how hard it is to be interesting and and to have a nuanced approach to every idea. Everyone's thinking of everything. We're all thinking of everything and we're all watching everything on social media. So I know, but I know how hard it is to have a nuanced approach, even in the personal development space, because there's a lot of redundancies. Authentic self, self-love, self-care. A lot of redundancies. Is that a word? Redundancies? If it's not a word, I'm sorry. Sounds legit. Let's look it up really quick. It sure is. It sure is. That's a $12 word. Charge it to the game. I have a 10th grade education. Fuck you. There's a lot of redundancies in the personal development space. Can you have a nuanced approach to it? Can you have a nuanced thought process around it? When it comes to politics, there are nuances. When it comes to race issues, can you work within the gray areas in the nuance? If you're going to start a podcast, can you do that? It's harder to do than you think. You got to spend a lot of time thinking. That's why, you know, I'm doing this Ron Ron Funch's uh, writing exercise. Love, hate, fear. What we talk, really where this podcast came from is my fear of success because I'm finally finding some success. Finally finding some success and it's scary. I don't want to fuck it up. I don't want to fuck it up, but I've been putting this work in. Anyway, suffer on purpose. Stop trying to skip the line, but follow your dreams at the same time. If that, if that is a contradiction, life is duality. Do both. It's fine. Be both. Let's wrap it up. Vultures circling above, they all in a piece, but they don't even know my name. Nah. Won't get even to swipe for the train. Cloudy, ride to the airport, gonna get right for the plane. Customs smell like whoosh, wife you hand in a dish. Yes, and they got no shame. Nah, never. So we lie in the shine. With a broke, you got no game. Waking up next to the skates. Can't go home to a dame. Nah, tell themselves to the same. Really though, who could they blame? Now I'm blaming them either. They just wanna play the game and they're eager, eager still. I don't wanna know you. I'm busy. You don't even know thyself.